Okay, let's get this show on the road. So, today uh, we're going to be talking about SRT, about um, synergy working with SRT and what SRT means to the broadcast industry. We are very excited about SRT at Synergy. We have uh, um, found it to be an extremely useful uh, new uh, protocol and allows it allows us to do all manner of things in a different way. Um, and we always like uh, to see things, um, to, we always like um, there being different ways to do things because there's always more than one way to do something and in Synergy we try to keep that as a principle. Um, SRT allows you to do all sorts of amazing things with your television signals and let's, uh, let's have a look at what we mean by that. So, so uh, the point of the webinar is, what is SRT and why does it matter to me? Straight away, let's uh, get rid of the, uh, the first thing that a lot of people ask who, who are familiar with broadcasting. SRT, isn't that subtitles? Well, yes it is, but yes it isn't. Uh, SRT refers to secure, reliable transport, uh, and we're going to show you now why it's important to you. It's going to be in two parts. First part is uh, talking. Uh, I should be doing most of the talking. Taking part in this webinar through sheer chance and good fortune um, is also Lewis Kirkcaldy, our head of product management. Uh, he may also be jumping in and uh, before we start the demos, I'm going to hand over to him for a quick summary. Uh, as he's been uh, the, the driving force behind this uh, uptake in the company. So first off, for the talking, let's go to the slides. This is uh, what we're going to be doing, uh, what I'm going to be talking about. Um, the uh, talking part starts with a little introduction and history, uh, and then we will explain what SRT is for and what it's not for. Uh, who is working with SRT right now? Um, how does it work? in a very, very basic way. It's very clever stuff, but I'll try and, and make it clear, and Lewis can help me there if, I, uh, if I'm not clear. Um, then we'll look at uh, okay. SRT in the industry, <laughs> SRT in the industry generally, and SRT in, at Synergy today and in the immediate future. So to begin, uh, the brief history in the beginning. Back in the, uh, in the 70s, people started feeding television into computers, uh, digitization or quantization of television, Quantel being the, uh, the famous pioneers in this area. So the notion of being able to use digitization, digital um, uh, handling of signals to uh, help analog television along um, was the beginning. Um, with time, uh, along came compression, which gave us MPEG and DVB. Compression was necessary because analog required uh, large amounts of bandwidth uh, to send data that wasn't being used. Compression made it possible to, to focus each signal only on the relevant data, and suddenly you could fit a lot more signals into the previous space. So DVB and MPEG um, allowed you to, uh, to handle multiple signals. It allowed you to digitize the signals, which meant that it allowed you to use yeah, them within yeah. an ordinary IT environment. Uh, and that's what we're all about. Uh, along came the internet at around the same time, or as rather the World Wide Web at around the same time. The internet had already been going for 20 years at that point. Uh, World Wide Web, promised uh, multimedia distribution, but initially, in the days of dial-up modems, America Online, CompuServe, and all that stuff that only old, us old folk remember, um, the, there was simply not enough bandwidth, even with uh, the compression that DVB and MPEG had been able to manage, there wasn't enough bandwidth to send full quality television pictures that uh, a broadcast engineer and a television consumer would accept. Uh, initial web video was uh, uh, playing card sized screens with postage stamp sized pixels and was absolutely not ready for television. Um, but uh, help was on the way, um, it was in only a few short years, the smartphone arrived. When the smartphone arrived, that got a whole bunch of people thinking about how to deliver video better. Uh, and uh, the various innovations that have come from that have led us to uh, the 
uh, where we are today. So uh, it's been a long time coming when you consider that DVB and uh, uh, the World Wide Web are roughly the same age. Um, it's been a long time coming that they could work together, but uh, we've reached that point now via SRT. Mm -hmm. So what's it for? Uh, the best video from the worst networks, quoted because that's coming straight from High Vision. That was their uh, mission statement uh, for SRT, and that is also what it delivers. Um, somebody just asked me a question in Chinese. Uh, I'm afraid I shan't be able to answer that. Um, what's it for? Signal transport. Uh, SRT allows you to send... Uh, oh. I can hear. Is anyone... Oh, it's okay. Um, so, signal transport. Uh, SRT allows you to transmit a broadcast quality television signal across the public internet. Um, and, uh, gentlemen, hello. hello. Uh, uh, Andrew, yeah, I think you might need to click on some people and actually force mute them. There's an Abdul Qadir who's uh, not mute. There we go. Yep, okay. And I think there's also a second person, uh, second. Sandeep. Through, yeah. Oh, Sandeep. Sandeep. Yeah. Yeah, hi, hi Andrew. Hi, hi Sandeep. Yeah. Can you mute your mic, please, man? Uh, we're, we're hearing yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, just, 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 just. Okay. Thanks, man. No, it's fine. Yeah, that's uh, fine. You, you, might, you, you can click through here, Andrew, and just uh, suppress it because uh, you're can presenter. Be, I can be in control. Okay. All right. It's all gone quiet again. Um, okay, so. By the way, folks, I'm recovering from a cold, so if I uh, suddenly have to, to mute my mic and cough, or if I cough into the mic, I'm horrid. sorry about that in advance, but anyway, so where were we? So yeah, signal transport. Um, you can use the public internet to, con to send broadcast television. Uh, now, um, the implications of this are enormous. Uh, we know what it costs to send a signal over a satellite. Uh, we know what um, dedicated connections will cost you. The fact that you can just pick up and use a standard internet connection to send a signal from, uh, from one point to another uh, changes everything in terms of setup, cost, uh, ease of use, etc. Now, this is contingent. Uh, morning, Ahab. Um, this is contingent on there being a decent internet connection, but uh, this is the case in large parts of the world, and certainly between metropolitan areas. Um, there are some parts of the world, like Germany and America, where if you get into the country, it's a bit more difficult. Uh, but uh, mostly you can get a broadband signal internet connection fairly generally now. Uh, so that's kind of useful. Um, then we have, uh, not only can you send that signal over the internet, but you can send it encrypted. Uh, therefore, nobody's going to be able to sniff it and get any benefit from it if they don't know the passphrase at the other end. Uh, so it's both uh, easy and it's also uh, secure and it's reliable. How it's reliable will come up in a, a slide in a, a, a minute, um, but it does ensure that once that connection is in place and, and it's stable, it will keep going. Uh, they, um, it, creates uh, the possibility of infrastructure simplification because A, uh, you won't need uh, dedicated connections and uh, the like, and B, even within an organization, if you're using SRT, you can send broadcast video over Wi-Fi. Wait, what? Yes, you can send broadcast video over Wi-Fi, uh, which also means uh, that um, for quick setups, uh, live work or whatever, um, the the setup time can be much quicker um, simply because you'll, you'll be running less cable than you used to. It is simply a whole new way of working and the world will never be the same, we believe. So um, now it has to be said, we can say what it's for. The question is, what's it not for? Um, so. Uh, as will be explained as I get into the, the nuts and bolts, SRT is uh, UDP based, not TCP based, and therefore is not a replacement for RTP. Uh, that's going to stay because it's a broadcast protocol and you will still have uh, the use of that. 
So it, will, it is not a replacement for us uh, for RTP. It is a, an enhancement um, for of in, in IP video. It is a third IP video option now, along with RTP and uh, basic UDP. It's also uh, not for reception at consumer endpoints. You're not going to be using this to uh, feed set-top boxes anytime soon because it's UDP-based, it's not broadcast. So any connections that take place will require that the, the server would, can, can handle a number of connections. So it can scale with uh, configuration and care to thousands, but it won't go to millions. Um, so it's strictly uh, conceived as a point or a point to dozens of points protocol. Uh, it's not a broadcast protocol. But for distribution and contributions, uh, it's, uh, it works fine. <coughs> Excuse me. So who's involved? The SRT Alliance. SRT Alliance is a bunch of us us because Synergy is involved, um, who are all working with this protocol. When it came up for the first time, uh, it's been about five or six years now since uh, uh, how Vision started working on it. And as word got around what it was they were trying to do, um, the a lot of us uh, uh, came along and said, man, that's cool. Let's uh, let's do it as well. Um, and the people that have come on board include uh, Microsoft, Avid, and 300 plus more companies. It's a who, who's who of broadcasting. If you have a look at the SRT Alliance site, srtalliance.org, um, you'll start to see some of the people who, who uh, are now involved. Now, uh, because SRT is an open protocol, uh, because it's been completely uh, published, uh, all of these people can simply grab it, build it, and, and run with it. Uh, and interoperability is absolutely no issue at all. In fact, part of, of uh, uh, one of the things that's helped us setting it up is already existing SRT-enabled software that we were able to in integrate painlessly with ours, including High Vision's own software, of course. And that gave us um, additional tools uh, that, uh, that made it possible to, for example, show off broadcast playouts coming from Germany while we were standing in an ex exhibition hall in uh, America and generally blowing people's minds. In addition, uh, uh, the the uh, open um, oh, I don't want to say the pirates because that's a little harsh, but the uh, open source reverse engineering crews, uh, VLC, FFmpeg, GStream, of those guys are also supporting it. Uh, so you can be uh, using it in your Linux environment as well. Just you won't be using Synergy software for that. So how does it work? This is the bit where uh, uh, where we get technical for a little bit. Um, you can see on the uh, the diagram here. This diagram comes from High Vision. Actually, comes from the um, SRT GitHub, which I heartily recommend you to visit. Just a sec. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, so here we can see uh, if we're trying to send a video signal, the Makito X is a High Vision box across a um, across an internet connection um, the bit rate and the frame rate can be uh, changed in transmission via uh, bandwidth limitations bottlenecks jitter packet delay etc etc dropped packets uh, and that can mean that the decoder does not get congruent information in order to decode uh, this, this is not good. Instead, what SRT does is it makes a connection, and then having made the connection, it feeds the connection back to the source, uh, in, enough information back to the source that the source can reconstruct uh, the characteristics of the signal and ensure that it arrives at the other end in the same shape as it left. Um, so uh, this takes advantage of various things that have happened um, over the last few years. Uh, in uh, high-speed data transfer generally, um, and it baked, takes those things which previously worked for big files and makes them work for video streams. Very clever stuff. So this is the core of how it works. Um, by all means, for the interested parties, if you haven't already done so, visit srtalliance.org, have a look at their GitHub, uh, and uh, 
immerse yourself in it. If you're not, uh, if you're not too worried about the uh, uh, deep, dark, inner secrets of it, uh, you can simply appreciate the fact that we've already done all the work for you and it's now built into Synergy software. So where we see it being used um, is uh, in signal distribution, uh, sending a point-to-point -point, uh, um, signal from a, site A to site B. Contribution feeds. SRT, now we, we have discovered in the last few years, talking about uh, smartphones, that a lot of these smartphones get delivered with pretty spiffy cameras. Um, iPhones have good ones. <coughs> Excuse me, Huawei have good cameras. Um, now, obviously, a good camera in the hands of a buffoon is not going to do you any good. That's, but that's Boris the dog, people, the uh, Bristol dog. Um, uh, obviously, having a, a great camera in your hand is no good if you're a buffoon. A good cameraman would be uh, an idea. But we have already seen uh, Hollywood motion pictures made with an iPhone. So there is no issue with the picture quality. What SRT gives you is it gives you the possibility to connect that cell phone directly into a broadcast infrastructure, either as a live feed or as a contribution. And we'll be showing you how that can work when we get to the demo bit. Um, studio infrastructure, as I've already mentioned, um, uh, and we also mentioned at the bottom, uh, it's going to be possible now to use a Wi-Fi connection uh, for your um, Synergy Air clients and various other uh, piece, uh, um, pieces of equipment in your broadcast chain, um, which saves cable uh, and makes for much quicker setting up. Uh, monitoring. Now, um, we've already uh, got a product that's kind of remarkable, uh, and that many of you know it already, and that's our multi viewer. Uh, one of the things that makes our multi viewer different is that. It can output um, an RTP stream, and so this is something that we show people a lot. Okay, so your normal multi viewer is a television set with a lot of plugs in it. One one television set, one picture. Thank you very much. Take the Synergy multi viewer, feed those signals into a, a server, and then you can have all over your facility using RTP. You can place that multi viewer wherever it needs to be seen. SRT goes one step further. Now you can have your monitoring go over SRT to a remote site. You can have your multi viewer on your tablet at home if you need it, um, because uh, SRT allows you to send that pure quality signal um, and therefore allows your monitoring to, to go over a wide area now, whereas before we could offer it over a local area, uh, whereas traditional multi viewers are locked to one location. So this is how we see uh, SRT being used. Um, this is the, the possibilities that are, are opened up. Uh, it is currently built into Synergy Air. Version 14 um, has input, output and decryption. Version 15, which we will be seeing, um, uh, also supports encryption and DNS resolution. Uh, I will be explaining more about the version of air that we're showing but uh, when we come to it, but um, just to say it's very new. We also have MultiViewer 15, uh, SRT input and output, as I've just mentioned. So you can um, pull your contributions or your uh, streams or whatever into uh, MultiViewer as SRT signals, and you can uh, even if they're encrypted, and then you can output them again so that you can see that multi-viewer anywhere where you've got a, a good internet connection. Route 15. Now, uh, I happen to be running uh, Route 15 on this machine, but it is new and it's not out yet. Uh, SRT handle, uh, manage, signal management and routing are integral in Route 15. Uh, so we, we could already handle uh, RTP and UDP signals. And now SRT is added to that. Uh, this, again, for, for distribution, those of you who are familiar with Synergy Root uh, will be um, having light bulbs pop over your head right now. Uh, Synergy Root is already um, very useful for IP signal distribution generally. Uh, Root uh, and SRT uh, gives you the possibility for um, integrated uh, um, routing across, on, on a global level. 
if you require it, uh, of all your signals through one single pane of glass, one single controller. Capture, uh, Capture 14 has SRT input, uh, so this would allow your um, roving reporter with his phone uh, to go straight into Capture or straight into a live feed, as I've said. And uh, finally, Synergy Encode um, does SRT to baseband uh, NTI RTP uh, and vice versa. So you can use our Synergy Encode software uh, to, to uh, tr change any signal that you already have uh, into um, SRT. So if, and there may be some out there, if you are an organization that is still uh, wedded hopelessly to baseband, uh, you can get into the SDI, SD, uh, SRT world uh, simply by using our ENCODE product uh, and use that uh, to, to go from site to site. So, uh, so yes, now it's time to get into the demo. Uh, before I do that, it's not quite enough talking. Lou, have you got anything you want to add? I've, yeah, no, I don't think so. Uh, I think you've you've pretty much covered that part. Uh, I mean, it, it's just worth reminding people that while we have some SRT, you know, we're always improving it. Uh, the the high vision open source project, uh, high vision led open source project, is always improving. It doesn't stop. Uh, but there's plenty of things shipping right now that support SRT. So while you've been pointing out some very nice things that are coming, uh, you know, there's there's a lot you can do with release product now. Uh, even more you can do if you want to contact us to get access to betas. Okay, thanks, Luke. So yeah, so all right, time for the demo now. Um, so uh, I will tuck this away. Now um, I will um, point out I am using here um, a Synergy Air version uh, that is brand new. Uh, that is, I, I pulled off of our server last week. Um, this will be available as a public beta sometime in the next weeks, um, but it has some features, therefore, that you're going to see that are brand new. Um, so what I will do is just bring up the configurator to start with. Um, and we'll go here and we'll have a look at what's gone on here. Um, if you're not familiar with their configuration, uh, bear with me. Um, those who are will, will find this interesting. Um, uh, so here we have my uh, first engine. And I've configured this uh, for an SDI input. Uh, new people will notice here, by the way, uh, those who are who know Air. Yes, we've got some more tabs. There's three uh, lines of tabs where there used to be two. Uh, there is now a DTMF tab in Air. Very cool. Uh, people have been asking for this for a while. So, uh, so what I have done, I have asked my engine to accept an RTP input, uh, and that is here. And here is my uh, RTP input. Uh, ticked to uh, enter the engine and oh oh look it's DNS resolution those of you've been playing with our, our demos up to now and with the current version will know that you had to do a quick NS lookup and put an IP address in there now we support even support uh, address resolution which will also be extremely helpful uh, for uh, quick setups so in order to get an S, uh, to my air engine uh, to understand SRT, I simply uh, put switch on the RTP functionality uh, and insert a URI, uh, and I am now ready to listen to um, a um, an SRT stream. And to play it back, I've configured uh, two things. I've configured a screen output, and I've configured a an RTP output. Now the RTP output you will see here is set to 1080. That is purely and simply because if I try and feed the uh, UHD out, uh, my machine will start stuttering and choking and it will look bad. So this is simply rescaled because of the hardware of my machine, uh, which is not in any way intended as a broadcast server. Um, it's a simple desktop. Yet nonetheless, even though it is a simple desktop. Still have eight things running. Uh, yeah. There's also that. Um, I have uh, all these engines running at the same time. Actually, I've got one running. I don't need to. <laughs> um, I'm, I am able to run eight engines on it. I am able to run capture on it, et cetera, et cetera. But something had to give, and that was the uh, um, this output. Nonetheless, the screen output is there. OK, so boom, big reveal. Hello, world. You are now looking. Whatever this is, whatever um, uh, 
uh, uh, GoToMeeting is doing to your desktop video, I, I can't help you with. But I am telling you, oh, and there we have Mr. Lewis in the background. Hello. This is a UHD feed that is being uh, that is arriving here from Bristol. I think the distance total distance is about 500 kilometers uh, over ground. Um, and as you can see, you can see the sweep hand on the clock in the lower left. Uh, you can see the lava lamp throbbing in the right. And of course, you can see Lewis twice, uh, once holding his thumb up and again as an extremely young man from his BBC pass just to the left of him. <laughs> he might have forgotten yeah. he hung that up. Uh, yeah, well, there's a lot of silly things in this tableau. But uh, yeah, GoToMeeting isn't doing a brilliant job of compressing it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you, you, you can tell it's real. Uh, yeah. it, it looks much better at, at, at my end. <laughs> yeah, we can see also the uh, slight slight latency there on the because we're getting the uh, the voice uh, at a slightly different time. But on the other hand, uh, that latency is considerably less than a satellite would be. And we haven't even tried tuning this. This is coming out of of the um, uh, the um, Bristol uh, into the Bristol inter, uh, internet connection and to my home connection uh, without any kind of, of uh, uh, extra work. So this is our UHD over internet, uh, over public internet uh, play out. And yeah, I think that uh, it, I'm, I like it. I'm going to tuck it away now so we can get back into the mechanisms of it. So here, that's it. We can see here, we've, I've set my player mode to um, uh, to UHD um, and uh, um, I can now also call up uh, my uh, multi viewer uh, and this is what my multi viewer looks like now um, the uh, the multi viewer that we're looking at here uh, contains as you can see two multi viewers um, one of those is uh, the uh, the big one, and then there's a second one in the lower quadrant there. Um, this multi these multi viewers are showing uh, an SRT playout from Synergy Air in SD, which is coming from southern Germany to me in the Netherlands. Here we can see our uh, UHD feed again, uh, reduced to 1080p, just so that I I don't torment my sh my machine to death. Um, lower left is our Nuremberg multi viewer. So this is a multi viewer that is being emitted over SRT from our data center in Nuremberg, the same place that the feed up above it is coming from. Uh, and here we see um, the uh, 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 video black is our queue, queue for our air control. That would normally be showing uh, an item, but we've clearly reached the end of the playlist. So that's a video black is a, a preview with nothing in it. Um, we can see uh, in the Complete lower left, we're watching live German television, uh, 1080p from terrestrial from a terrestrial receiver. Um, on the uh, the uh, bottom little picture in the middle, SRT injected, is a cell phone feed, um, which has gone into our system as well. Uh, then the final bottom left is a webcam, which is being fed into. Uh, my system showing my screen and so on and so forth and up in the background barely visible um, is Lord Ganesha from India it was a present from a happy customer um, so we're seeing here um, SRT feeds into uh, multi viewer and we are seeing um, SRT signals coming directly and it's all mixed and matched and there's Lewis uh, showing us from the cell phone, um, that cell phone signal is going from High Vision to uh, Nuremberg and then coming back out at us. Um, and so, it, sorry, hi. Yeah. It, I can't understand how we how CRT is coming. It's just a streaming server. It's like a streaming server. Okay. Okay. No. So what what is it? Um, SRT is a simply a new way of uh, transmitting MPEG transport streams. So whereas um, 
it takes advantage of uh, various things that have been learned in the last 20 years about high-speed file transfer. There was a thing called UDT, uh, which it, have a look at in Wiki, Wikipedia, which was used to send large files. Um, basic idea is that at small scale, uh, what you use for, for checking packets and so on and so forth doesn't work at large scale. So um, UDT basically showed people how to send huge amounts of data quickly, and SRT builds on that technology um, to uh, to a uh, um, to make this possible. So from, from our point of view, all it is is another IP protocol, and that's how we've built it in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, to, just to recap, but SRT is a protocol, uh, and it's a feature built into Synergy products and other products. So the, the SRT protocol was described by High Vision, building on others' work. They open sourced it with Wowser and formed the alliance. And so it's a protocol that comes with a library and that we, we use the library, as do most, you know, most other people, they use the, the same library from the open source project that is effectively the mechanism for moving uh, uh, video over SRT. And as Andrew says, that wraps up MPEG transport streams. But we've embedded that library in pretty much everything Synergy makes now. Uh, so it becomes a feature of our products. And it is a streaming server, effectively. Uh, when you enable that feature, uh, on the engines, it, it is a, a, a streaming server, but it's a streaming server that's optimized for the broadcast scenarios where you want low latency, you know, very low latency, uh, error recovery, high bandwidth. And it, 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 every time you're faced with an engineering choice in the protocols, and you could choose to optimize for distributing to, to thousands, hundreds of thousands of millions of viewers with proxy servers, uh, you would choose some mechanisms that aren't great for broadcasting. And so it, it, it's very similar. It's Хорошо. like the, the uh, uh, Hopefully that answers the question. Okay. Thanks, Lou. All righty. Um, so now... Uh, I mean, I, sorry, sorry. I, I, I meant it's just when you in Synergy, yeah. just I put my setting and just IB. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm, and going to show, I I'm, I'm going to show you that in a second. All right. Okay. Okay, right so now we're good. showing it working and then I'm going to uh, move over and I'm going to show you how this is configured. Yeah. So one thing I wanted quickly to say is um, whether the video still, you can see a red video still flashing nearly in the middle of the screen. Uh, I wanted to point out the reason that video is still is that we are looking at a preview screen from Synergy Air in MultiViewer. If you know Air, you'll know also this is something new. Um, but I just wanted to pick it up and point it out while it was there. So, so to uh, since people are keen to know, I will uh, move on now to how do we set this up. So if I want to receive um, an SRT stream, I simply have to enable uh, RTP and put the stream address in here. Uh, the stream address up to, in version 14, if you're doing this, you'll have to put an IP address in. Version 15 will resolve that, uh, that name for you. Difference between uh, um, SRT and RTP is that with RTP, you want your dedicated video network available. Uh, with SRT, that's no longer necessary. SRT can, in fact, coexist on other networks uh, in a way that RTP isn't very good at. So for an ed, uh, um, receiving an SRT stream, this is what you do. For uh, transmitting uh, an RTP stream, then um, what you need to do is go to, uh, now I now have to remember how I did it. Uh, one of these engines, this is the one I think. Yeah, so this is the one that's outputting the um, SRT stream. And if I go here, then we can see. So uh, in air, um, you have, uh, as you already know, you have the possibility of a broadcast or a unicast, uh, unicast mode in your IP output. If you uh, select unicast, uh, then that will give you the choice of uh, SRT in this drop down menu. If you've only got multicast up here, you won't see SRT. Uh, so this is worth mentioning. If you're going to transmit uh, from uh, your system using SRT, then all you need to do is put in here all your uh, IP addresses, in other words, 0.0.0.0, uh, .0 .0 .0 and a port number. 
This tells uh, uh, Synergy to uh, Synergy Air to output um, that uh, SRT stream uh, over all available network interfaces. I'm going to stop you there and just slightly correct that. Okay. That's not yeah. quite right, but probably the way you described it. That SRT has two modes that makes it somewhat different from classical RTP. Uh, you have the, the same way that you'll have been using uh, UDP and RTP to push packets out to the network is still available with SRT, except SRT expects you to push them rather than multicast, much more like unicast to a single person. Uh, so they're, they're very similar to before, you can type an IP address in there of a machine you wish to transmit SRT packets to. Uh, and then we'll begin the stream of SRT packets to between your machine and that machine. Uh, but the mode that Andrew's placed it in is uh, what's called call a uh, listener mode. Uh, so in listener mode, you specify zeros as the IP address, which means you will allow other people to call you. It's very similar. The, the analogy that best describes it is uh, like a telephone conversation. One party is responsible for picking the phone up and dialing the number in of the other one. Uh, at that point, uh, information can flow in both directions. Uh, so I can ring in the UK, uh, I can call the uh, number for the speaking clock. And even though I called the number, the speaking clock will then tell me the time. Uh, so the direction of SRT connection, whether you're a caller or a listener, has nothing to do with the direction of video flow. The direction of video flow is related to if you've connected it to a source uh, or a destination type device, a video decoder or a video encoder. Uh, so the, one of the common ways to configure it, as, as Andrew has here, is as a listener, which will allow uh, things to, uh, it, it will sit and wait patiently for a phone call, uh, or uh, as can be the case, depending upon firewall configurations, if you're trying to send things to the cloud, uh, you may wish to actually put the IP address in there to trigger things to go out. And one of the great benefits of SRT is that only one machine of the pair needs to have a firewall configuration open to allow that data in. Uh, so uh, unlike some other protocols sometimes where you must have two-way configurations to allow port traffic in with UDP in both directions, generally the way that SRT works, it, it uses UDP but it shares the same port, uh, and then you can normally open the firewall up in the cloud, for example, uh, and then work from a completely normal network that just has internet outbound access, and generally that works. So it is somewhat weird and complicated, this idea of callers and listeners, uh, but that works inside Synergy by di uh, dialing in zeros. If you're not dialing anyone out, uh, meaning you'll wait for a phone call, or dialing in an IP address, if you wish to be the one to, to start the connection up, uh, meaning you are kind of dialing the telephone to reach someone else. And it doesn't matter who calls who, the, the video can flow in either direction. It really, uh, that's just a, a question of who's expecting to be a decoder and who's an encoder. And that's not related to the protocol. I hope that's clear. Sorry, Andrew. No, super. No, uh, um, I do tend to try and, and, and explain these things in the most simple terms. And, uh, but no, Luke, Luke uh, has put his finger on it. I'm, I'm using it in one particular way. It's not the only way to use it. Um, Nonetheless, in this particular setup, so this is my, I've set my output to this, uh, but what's my input? If I go to my, uh, uh, oops, I'll switch this off and go to my input, you'll see I have an RTP stream coming in. So this means that my, I have an RTP stream coming in and it's going out um, as an SRT stream. This is Synergy in code. So here, instead of where, I, where if I'm receiving SRT, I'll put SRT in here. In this particular case, I'll put RTP in here, and I'm playing it back out as an SRT stream. So next thing to show, let's have a look at uh, Synergy uh, multi-viewer configuration. So I'll start Synergy multi-viewer configuration up. And it's going to uh, need me to tell it that uh, I'm allowed to use it, which I shall. Um, and then uh, we can have a look at the, uh, the way that MultiViewer is configured. Ah, when it, uh... So with MultiViewer, again, it's set up for uh, configuration um, both into, there uh, we go, uh, uh, for input and output. So here, um, 
name resolution isn't yet in uh, uh, the version of MultiViewer that I'm using, so I've had to go back to an IP address. But for uh, my uh, inputs here, uh, Nuremberg SRT Air Playout is coming in as a um, an SRT stream uh, over this from from this URI. Um, now, and if I go to the next one, again, Bristol's uh, IP address is uh, given here. Uh, no, let me get this straight. Um, uh, I've, I am retransmitting this uh, in, um, retransmitting this at 1080p. So, um, the Bristol feed is coming in. If I go back here and we uh, look at that configuration, um, I showed you where the feed is coming in. For playback, it's going out and I, uh, as um, the same way that I've been taught that that, that Lewis talked about and in uh, listener mode, uh, port 9008. So I've been able to do this because I have pre-processing, use the pre-processing functionality that we have built in to squish the video down to make it manageable. So here we have SRT, again, using an, an, an encode mode. Um, SRT is coming in at UHD, going out as uh, uh, HD, or rather 25p, uh, into uh, MultiViewer. Here, just the straightforward Nuremberg MultiViewer input. Uh, that's this one in the, the lower left. Um, uh, again, simply with the SRT stream. Uh, and then my webcam, which is coming straight from my um, my system here, uh, not directly relevant for SRT, uh, but just showing that we can use webcams uh, in air and multi-viewer now uh, and in um, capture uh, to allow you to um, input uh, into the system for test purposes and so on and so forth. If I go to my output, um, I, I, the window output is disabled. I'm not running a window output. Uh, but I am running uh, an IP output, and again, SRT, uh, using our um, NVIDIA offload uh, to output a 720p stream just because it's easier. Um, and so we have SRT going in and SRT coming out of MultiViewer. And then uh, um, we should also have a quick look at uh, Synergy Root, which I should have opened and didn't. So let's just go down to. Uh, root control and so synergy root i can now also uh, populate with srt and i can use our virtual destinations um and our uh, all our nice routing tricks um to uh um send srt signals now we already have customers that are are using uh root to handle their rtp uh so and here as we see i can simply put in all my uh, SRT inputs, um, and if I just pick one and play it, then we should see the multi-viewer pop into the preview screen. Um, and so there's the Nuremberg multi-viewer. Uh, this uh, is a test that we did for SRT audio transmission from India. We were able to send uh, audio um, from uh, as an SRT stream from India. Uh, um, just to again to to prove the point. So you you can use root uh, with uh, with its uh, virtual destinations um, to handle SRT just as easily as you can any other kind of uh, IP. Uh, and then the final thing to look at is uh, if we go to capture. Okay, is, that, is that a question or is that somebody just yawning in the back? Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Andrew. It's, yeah. uh, it means it's SRT is unicast, but I can receive it in many listeners in same time. Yeah, but um, many based on how powerful your transmission server is. Uh, remember, if you're you connecting to more than one um, endpoint or one more than one endpoint is connecting, then it's going to open another session. So you have to have a server that's powerful enough to handle those sessions. And practically, even with a, a very powerful server, more than a few thousand sessions isn't going to be possible. So, oh, okay. So the listener can be it's 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 another uni, uh, unicast stream. So it could be many unicast stream going from one source. Yes, that's right. Uh, <laughs> so now here we have um, the uh, SRT stream coming in 
to Synergy Capture. Uh, if we see down here at the bottom of the capture screen, you can see that the input URI is in fact a, an SRT signal. Again, it's an SRT signal that I've generated using Synergy Encode, so it has my local internal IP address uh, on it. But um, if I go to configure, um, then I can select uh, my SRT input and I can select it either uh, putting it in by hand, just say from the drop down menu, this is going to be SRT, uh, or I can also use uh, Synergy Root uh, and select it from my Synergy Root inputs that I already showed you. So, and of course, the, the, these. Uh, this capability is coming throughout out the system. So uh, from here, I can directly take a Synergy root input um, and I can uh, um, assign it to capture and capture it straight away. And obviously from capture, that means I can go straight into, uh, um, I haven't switched it on, but if I switch the archive adapter on, I can be capturing that SRT stream directly into Synergy archive. So uh, uh, I think that's, isn't that everything I was going to show? Let's, uh, uh, PowerPoint's disappeared. Uh, Dayan, man, you're late. <laughs> we just finished. Um, so uh, I, let me see, did I cover everything? Let's see. Receiving a signal from the UK to the Netherlands. Yes. Uh, showing a signal from Southern Germany. Yes. Setting up to transmit, setting up to receive and capture. Yep. Okay. So uh, that's it. Um, same for uh, Yeah. Okay. Sorry, that's just me adding some links for people uh, to the relevant section from the What's New post or the manuals. So uh, you've obviously covered configuring uh, a number of things there, and I just thought I'd helpfully throw some uh, links for people so they can go back and see uh, how they might do this themselves. Great. Thank you very much. We'll build that into the next one. Um, okay, so that's the, the, the presentation and the demos. If uh, you want a video of this, um, please, uh, we'll be, um, we have recorded this and we will make it available. Send a mail to, to us at sales at Synergy uh, and as soon as it's available, uh, YouTube or, or FTP or whatever, we will, uh, we will let you know. If you joined us late um, and are still scratching your head, um, I will be running this um, same uh, uh, a presentation, the same webinar, in about five and a, uh, five and a bit hours um, of the afternoon session, which will begin at 1600 CET. Uh, you'll be slightly more polished than this one, even, I'm sure. But um, yeah, so if you missed a bit or uh, you come in late or whatever, um, please feel free to join us again this afternoon. We'll be uh, very happy to have you. Um, and uh, if there aren't, uh, any questions you want to ask now, ask them quickly. Um, Andrew, do you, is this is a, CSRT is a, is a license option or uh, no. to be defaulted no. by 14 or 15? No, it's not. It's no more a license option than RTP is. It's built in. It's there. I mean, I, this is a hub, right? I'm talking to a hub here. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Andrew. Uh, yes, Andrew. Uh, yeah. Hi. <laughs> Good morning, man. Uh, yeah, no, it's 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 built into the system. There's no additional license at all. So the crucial thing is, um, and for, I mean, for, from where you are, the crucial thing is, uh, as long as you can have a nice, stable point-to-point -point internet connection, um, then this will work. And I can I can hear you're already thinking of things where this is going to be useful to you. Yeah, yeah, it's especially for multi viewer. Oh, exactly, exactly. That's in fact that's the, one of the first things that people have jump, jumped on is the multi viewer. We ha we have some uh, chaps in India uh, that that wanted exactly that. So, okay. Oh, yeah. So, and uh, Lewis is putting in some some uh, streams that people can try out if they want. I'm going to just pop this back up now so that we can see. Okay. So. Um, yeah, right. so should anyone want to actually see that camera stream that uh, Andrew is using, I've, I've published a 720p uh, rather than the massive UHD stream. Uh, to uh, There's a link to that in the chat history. If anyone has VLC3 uh, or any you know, copy of Air 14 or, or a multi view of 15 uh, betas on, available now, uh, you, you can actually try and uh, see that stream and you'll see the output with the Cocoa Pops and the clock. Uh, 
uh, in in your own tools because why not? All right. Okay then. In which case, first thing I'm going to do is thank everybody for uh, joining us this morning. And I shall now uh, stop the recording and uh, finish the meeting. And I shall either see you later or I shall speak to you at the next webinar that we do. Thank you very much. Uh, see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> You're most welcome.